morning everybody welcome back to another video we're gonna start the day out by hauling some more manure i was just thinking we got around 900 cows in total on the farm and this is a big part because we keep our steers right from day one all the way up to about 22 months once they weigh 1500 pounds so this adds up in the number of cows that we have out here and that means we got to deal with a lot of manure every year so this is just kind of the start of the fall manure hauling getting these corrals cleaned out we've had a bit of rain lately which has made these corrals a little bit muddier than we would like them to be that in combination with the the overcrowding maybe a little bit or just the number of animals in these corrals they're pretty muddy already just at the middle of september here so I'm also gonna start on it. We did that one yesterday. We're gonna do corral nine today. This corral is, uh, it's probably only 60% the size of the other one we did. So I imagine there's like three loads in this corral, but uh, get the cows chased over on that side and start hauling. Yesterday I got help from dad to chase that corral into this one. Try this one today by myself. Sometimes when the cows cooperate, it goes pretty good. Come on ladies. Let's go. Perfect. Got this corral nicely started out. It's quite a bit drier than the other one. And there's probably only two or three loads of manure instead of five. But uh, we're gonna try back the wagon in. That's typically how I always clean the corrals out in the spring when we're taking out that entire straw pack. Can be a little tough sometimes though to back the wagon up, especially with this corral, just the way that gate is there uh, makes it hard to take a wide turn around that corner there. But it always goes a lot quicker loading the wagon when you do get that wagon backed in the corral like this. So the GoPro here and we'll see how I do. It is the next day and we got the combine going out in the field, combining some canola. Uh, it's looking pretty bleak out there, although it's, it's doing about 17 or 18 bushels an acre, which for this year is above our expectations, but this is one of the better fields. So we'll have to see yet how the entire average is over all our fields, but this field for this year, it's not horrible. Um, still compared to any other year, it's terrible, but it is what it is. But uh, you guys can see out there, 
the field is pretty much green and that's actually all regrowth canola so it's just uh, with all this recent moisture and that hail I guess some seeds went into the ground and started growing and I bet this is some of the original plants also that just started regrowing like crazy uh, it's unfortunate it's gonna make the grain sample maybe a little bit higher moisture but it's dry enough anyway and uh, it's really time that we get this crop off because if we don't this regrowth is going to continue to grow and uh, it's going to cause bigger issues but all in all there's quite a bit of straw in this field as well compared to other fields so we're getting quite a few bales we need quite a few for bedding uh, so it's really good to see a lot of straw coming off of this field and uh, yeah it just kind of is what it is super windy today still got the drone up today's video is going to be a lot of drone footage hope you guys still enjoy it so uh, yeah, let's get the drone up in the air. We are at that 40 acres of alfalfa. You guys saw my dad cutting this, I think three days ago now, he swathed this down with the hay vine and the Macdon swather. The alfalfa's drying out pretty good. We've had a couple of really hot, windy days and it doesn't take long for this stuff to dry out if you get that kind of weather. We're raking it right now. Miriam is in the rake in the little New Holland tractor there. She's just raking the two swaths into one. This does a couple things for the alfalfa. Uh, once it's almost completely cured, you can flip it over and then it'll dry the bottom of the swath out. And it also puts two swaths into one, which is gonna make it way quicker to bale and uh, you know, cut that time in half. So two birds, one stone kind of thing is what this rake does. When you're raking alfalfa, it's pretty important that you do it when it's still moist or when there's a lot of dew on it in the morning. You don't wanna do it in the middle of the afternoon when it's really dry because then you'll knock all of the leaves off of the stems. Now you can see there's some alfalfa here and all of the leaves are still on the stem. It's not getting knocked off at all. And that's incredibly important that you make sure you're not knocking the leaves off because that is the majority of the feed value in this alfalfa, so. So that's the one piece of class equipment that we actually run on the farm that we own. A simple rake, it's a 2700 rake, and it does an excellent job of putting two swaths into one, flipping the crop over. You'll notice that my sister Miriam, she skipped all the headlands. They're actually just four outside rounds that are swathed. Uh, she'll do those last, otherwise if she raked it into two, fluffed it up, it's gonna dry out nicely when it's fluffed up. But uh, as soon as she starts driving over it, it's not gonna get fluffed up again, so she saves these to last. 
and that just helps the crop dry out. Yeah, she's gonna be done this field pretty quick. I imagine it only took two and a half hours to rake this field. It goes really fast, so it's good for her. Anyway, we're gonna get the baler out here probably two days from now. Hopefully we don't get any rain and get some 10 out of 10 alfalfa hay. It's always awesome when you get those perfectly green, dense, heavy alfalfa bales and uh, you can feed them to the milk cows or whatever you wanna do with them. But yeah, this is pretty exciting third cut. We are milking cows this afternoon and today turned out to be an incredibly hot day for the middle of September. Usually it starts to cool down in the fall. We got a thermostat here at the front of the barn on the patio. Check out how hot it actually got today. You can see, well for you American viewers, it shows on there two Fahrenheit, over 90 Fahrenheit and about 33 degrees Celsius. So for us here in September, that's hot. It's hot any time. That's, uh, I never enjoy this kind of weather. I'd rather have a minus 30. I've said that before. People called me crazy. But um, <clears throat> it's especially annoying this afternoon during milking time because of the construction for this pack barn. All five of the doors at the back of this parlor slash pack barn are off. And it's pulling the air from the back of the barn and pushing it to the front now. We do have the exhaust fans at the back of this barn which typically pull air from this door to the back of the barn. But since all the doors are gone back there, it's kind of the way the wind is today. It's pushing the air this way. And those cows, they exhaust so much heat and we're getting all of that heat from the cows pushed through the parlor just because of the wind today. And it is making it nice and hot in here. Millie's really enjoying it, right? <laughs> We are all done milking for this afternoon and I got one more thing I want to do before I'm done. This is our sort gate. We can enter cow's numbers in the computer. The ID reader right here will ID the cow. So it'll see which cow we sorted in case she's in here. And then there's a bunch of sensors in here that will figure out where the cow is in the sort gate and it will open that gate, sort the cow that we enter the computer out. And that's uh, a pretty handy tool. We use it pretty often, but during today's milking, for some reason, the door, these two little gates here were stuck shut. So these two gates just make it so that when a cow uh, is supposed to go through that gate, it'll close right behind her to stop the second cow from going through because this gate will be open when that second cow is in there and it just won't work good. So these things really help the sword gate work efficiently and they were just stuck closed. And like a hundred cows got stuck behind this sword gate before we saw it and then we had to push them all through here. It just took us a lot longer to uh, milk this afternoon because this sword gate was um, buggering up a little bit. And we found out, I think Dima mentioned this like a month ago, there's all fly manure on that sensor. So that's an infrared sensor. You can see there's two flies on there right now. Dirty little buggers. But they crap on those sensors and then those sensors think there's a cow in here and then you're out of luck. So that completely buggers up the sort gate. I got a towel here with some rubbing alcohol. Now we're just gonna quickly fix this so that doesn't happen again. Right on, that sort gate has four of those infrared sensors on there and they're all clean now. Oh, there's actually a decent little chunk of fly manure on there fly crap, whatever you want to call it. I hate it. It's on everything. Every gate in here, every chain you pick with your hands. Even those inlets in the winter time when I was adjusting them, when it was like minus 30 last December, whatever that was, my hands just get covered in fly crap. It sucks. The flies are definitely an issue. 
and it sucks to have to deal with them but uh, it is what it is anyway that's gonna be it for today's video guys if you enjoyed i hope to see you guys in the next one thanks for watching